Hello, you absolute legends. In this video, I'm going to share with you my top picks for the hardest tricks in GoldenEye speedrunning. Now, before I share the list, I think I should define exactly what I mean when I say trick. Basically, it's a technique used by speedrunners to change the way the game was meant to be played in order to gain an advantage. For example, on the statue level when we meet up with Janus, we're supposed to wait until he walks into position before he starts speaking. However, if you shoot him before he gets to his post, you can actually make him start his dialogue earlier, thus allowing us to complete the level faster. This definitely wasn't the intended way to play the level, therefore I would classify it as a trick. Also, I want to point out that just because these particular tricks might be the hardest, it doesn't mean the current world records for them are the hardest to achieve. I'd consider executing perfect train locks on world record pace to be much harder than anything on this list, but it's not a trick, so it doesn't really count. Perhaps top 5 hardest world records might make for a good video some other time. In any case, let us rock and or roll. Here's my list. In the past, speedrunners have used a few different methods to kill Trevelyan quickly on Cradle. The current and quickest strategy, however, is to use the explosion of the drone gun near Trevelyan to kill him instantly. Up until recently, we'd always manually destroy the console by shooting it as we ran around the engine. That changed in 2018 when it was discovered that when killed by the explosion of the drone gun, Trevelyan can actually drop a grenade close enough to the console to destroy it. So this is where we're at now. Kill Trevelyan and ignore the console hoping it blows up by chance. So how does this trick work? Well first, we shoot the drone gun next to Trevelyan as we wait for him to become active. It's important to note that Trevelyan is invincible until he runs into position and starts the countdown timer, so there is no point in trying to damage him any earlier. Once the drone gun has exploded, we need to shoot Trevelyan at the exact same time that the explosion damages him. This requires some timing, as explosions will only do damage once every 15 frames, or in other words, every half a second, as Goldeneye runs at 30 FPS. Assuming you weren't trying to time at all and were shooting Trevelyan at random times, you'd expect to kill him one out of every 15 runs. But even if you were trying to time the shooting of Trevelyan, the reality is that the frame rate is so poor at this moment that it becomes pretty difficult to do. Once killed, there is a 30% chance he will drop a grenade, and of those runs, there is approximately a 20% chance the grenade will destroy the console. Statistically, you're looking at a 1 in 225 chance of everything going right, but that doesn't factor in other considerations such as bad guard placement or unlucky gun spread. Technically, the strategy on all difficulties is exactly the same, and on all difficulties the world record is 33 seconds. But you'll notice many more people have the agent record. That's because there are subtle differences that make this trick much more annoying on the harder difficulties. Let's take a look at what they are. The first difference appears immediately as we begin the level. A distant guard needs to be killed, or he will backboost us many times. On Agent, due to guards having lower health, runners will shoot anywhere from 4 to 6 bullets at the guard to kill him before beginning strafe. On Secret and 00 Agent, runners will unload the entire clip before strafing. As strafing is faster than running straight forward, the extra time spent killing the guard here means they are off to a slightly slower start. Next, the drone gun actually takes two more bullets to destroy. This doesn't seem like a big deal at first, aside from taking slightly longer to destroy the drone gun, but the spread of the ZMG amplifies this difference, as many shots can miss, even if our aim is true. Killing Trevelyan is slightly more difficult as well. On Agent, any hit to Trevelyan will be enough damage to kill him, as long as it's timed with the drone explosion damage. On the harder difficulties, however, you need to either hit his body or have both guns hit him on the same frame if you shoot his arm. These slight differences have a huge impact, making 33 seconds on Secret and Double O Agent much harder. Yes! In early 2014, it was discovered that you can throw objects through doors by looking away, thereby unloading them and allowing the objects to pass through. This was originally used on control to make life a bit easier. 
but it wasn't until it was adapted to Cavern's secret agent that significant time was saved. Previously, runners would need to collect a keycard from this guard so that they could open the brown door at the end of the large hallway leading to Objective C. However, a mine can be thrown through the ceiling of the hallway from the previous intersection, destroying the computers without the need for opening the door. This means less travel distance and of course allows us to skip getting the keycard entirely. In theory, it seems pretty straightforward, but there's just something about it that makes it incredibly hard to do. Usually, even if you look away and try to unload the ceiling as quickly as possible, the mine still sticks to it instead of going through. The angle of the throw is extremely precise and a couple of factors make it incredibly difficult to execute in a run. First of all, the frame rate is absolutely atrocious. With so much going on, the frame rate plummets to one of the lowest levels that we have to deal with in the entire game. The low frame rate makes it very, very difficult to control Bond. Secondly, you need to be extremely lucky not to be shot at the wrong time, either just before or as you're throwing the mine. If you get shot while throwing the mine, it's game over. And given the amount of guards you've attracted, not being disrupted while attempting the throw is a rarity. Despite the trick being around for almost 5 years, only 12 players have used it to beat the previous record of 119, set using the older, much slower strategy. Surface 2 Secret Agent revolves around one main objective, break communications link to bunker. The intended way of doing this is to collect a key from a guard in a hut, which allows us to open the door to the communications equipment so that we can destroy it. A well-placed explosion outside of the communications room does just as good a job though, and allows us to skip getting the key entirely. On Agent, this is relatively straightforward as we conveniently have a spare explosive to use, a remote mine. On Secret Agent, we need to place this mine on the helicopter near the end of the stage, so the only other option is to farm a grenade from a guard earlier in the level. The method of using the grenade to destroy the communications link has steadily become more difficult over the years, as runners struggle to throw the grenade from further away. The satellite dish that houses the communication equipment is out of the way, so throwing it from further away allows us to take a better path to the end of the stage. More recently, runners would throw the grenade from much further away using the terrain as a ramp to launch the grenade further. This strategy was already considerably difficult, but it was taken a step further with the discovery of Arlene throws. The speed at which Bond leans to the side when aiming is considerably faster than normal movement. If timed correctly, a grenade or mine can be launched much further than normal by taking advantage of this extra speed. The trick requires frame-perfect inputs to achieve, but if done correctly, allows you to destroy the communications equipment from much further away. Previously, I mentioned that we need to farm a grenade from a guard earlier on in the level. Luckily, we do pass a guard near the beginning of the stage, but unfortunately, the odds of him pulling a grenade are only 1 in 23. So when you actually get a grenade, the heart rate rises and the adrenaline starts pumping, making the grenade throw much harder. And the throw is difficult enough as it is, without the pressure of having to wait 20 minutes per attempt. As mentioned, the inputs are frame perfect, but on top of that, you need to start priming the grenade at the correct time to allow the grenade to explode directly on top of the communications equipment. Also, Bond needs to be lined up correctly, which is extremely tight, as the dish is now very far away. The strategy was discovered almost four years ago, and since then only six players have managed to beat the previous world record of 49 seconds, which used a conventional throw. The next trick on the list was technically known about for many years before it was actually implemented into runs. But while it had been achieved using cheats, or in extreme conditions, it was never thought to be possible in a standard run. Ironically, just a month before it was done for the very first time in normal gameplay, the strategy was discussed on forums and concluded to be so improbable, it was more or less impossible to do. It doesn't seem to make much sense, but it's possible to warp through this door on depot by switching weapons to create a lag spike. This is because the boundaries between the door edge and the wall are imperfect, resulting in an extremely small gap. 
Due to the way GoldenEye calculates Bond's position when the game drops frames, it's possible to end up on the other side of the wall just beyond the imperfect boundary. Here is a clip of the trick being performed for the very first time on an actual run. I wouldn't really consider this trick difficult in of itself. It's definitely a rare occurrence, sometimes taking hours of attempts to successfully warp a single time, but the movement isn't very complex. What I do think is difficult though, is the combination of this trick with another trick done just before the warp, the train shot. By shooting through the train wall, you can alert the guards inside causing them to open the train door, allowing you to finish the level slightly faster. This trick is required to achieve the current record of 23 seconds. On the ranks, 56 people have used the depot warp in order to beat the previous record of 25 seconds, performed without the warp, but only 7 have managed to combine a perfect train shot with the warp. The difficulty comes down to being consistent. Because the warp is so rare, your success rate at the train shot has to be high or else the grind would just be too long. The level is so simple and boring that long grinds become almost impossible to do. Once you get the train shot, it's not even a sure thing that the guards will open the doors in time, and on top of that, the guards can actually block you on their way to the train. This is a scary record to go for, just for the fact that you may have to spend hours upon hours literally butting your head against a wall, praying for everything to go right. Speedrunners haven't killed Jaws on Aztec since 2002. His only purpose is to give the player a keycard that allows us to open the glass doors in the large black room, but we can actually get the guards to do this for us. Getting guards to open the glass doors isn't that hard really, and there are quite a few ways to get them to do it. Almost all methods involve attracting two or more guards and luring them to just in front of the glass. This is done by letting them see or hear you while standing next to the glass, obscuring their vision and then hiding before they can see you again. The guards will run to the spot they heard or saw you last, and because only one guard can stand in that exact spot, the other guard or guards will run around attempting to get to that same location. If the glass door gets in their way, they'll open it up. But the most difficult and fastest way to get the guards to open the glass door is by crouching inside a guard to become invisible. The strategy is executed with the following steps. First, run into the large black room and stand in this position. When the guard near the mainframe door sees you, he has a 14% chance of running towards the glass. The distance he ends up running is random, so even in the event that he runs, he may not make it all the way to the glass. If the guard reaches the glass, shoot his leg, causing him to start an injured animation and move backwards. He has two animations he can do, a short one and a long one. In order to get this to work, we need the longer animation. Once the guard has been injured, we need to run, activate the mainframe door, and then crouch into the guard before he has finished his animation. Once inside the guard, Bond becomes invisible to the other guards, causing them to run around attempting to get to your location. Again, if the glass door gets in their way, they'll open it up. But the guards opening the door isn't a certainty, and much of the time they simply won't do it, or if they do do it at all, it's too slow. Also, you can get stuck inside the guard once the glass opens, unable to get out. All in all, the strategy is hell to pull off, but it is definitely faster than the strategy used to get the world record of 1 minute and 23 seconds. As it stands, only one player has managed to pull this off with any success, landing 2 seconds behind the record. But the run had many mistakes and easily lost 3 seconds at a minimum after the glass strategy was successful. This strategy is one that is both scary to attempt, but also exciting in that it's definitely possible to achieve a new record with it. I certainly look forward to giving this one a decent crack in the future. Well there you go, I hope you enjoyed this list. If you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments. 
I'm probably going to be doing a mixture of the Perfect Dark History videos and the general entertainment videos like this one. I'm still experimenting, so bear with me in the meantime until I find my groove. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.